Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to be comparing two of the most hyped up new foundation releases of the year. Last month in my July testing hot new makeup video, I tried for the very first time the Lancome Tanti Dole Ultra Wear Care and Glow Foundation. I really enjoyed this foundation from the moment I put it on, and I even talked about it in my monthly favorites video for July because I had used it several more times, and each time I had a really good result. I felt like the coverage was very natural looking. It provided me with enough coverage as someone who is used to wearing more medium to full coverage foundations. I found that I could get just that perfect medium buildable coverage with this foundation. What I was a little bit worried about was the fact that it is a glowing foundation and those typically don't do so well for me because I do have oily skin. Not only do I have good luck with this foundation lasting all day, it also looks very natural on my skin. And even though I do get shiny, I don't get excessively shiny. And most of all, I don't feel greasy. Unless you have oily skin, you might not truly understand why I use that term. But overall, after using this foundation for about 10 days straight, and even taking it with me to a more humid climate and it holding up well there too, I was thinking that this was my latest holy grail foundation until Hourglass came along. This is the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. This foundation launched, I think maybe a week or two after the Lancome, and I was not going to purchase it because I was so happy already with the Lancome. But then, like I'm sure a lot of you, I saw it being hyped up on social media, and I thought everyone's skin looked so amazing when they would apply this, and so I said to myself, Risa, it's your job, and people will probably want to know what the differences are between the two, and you could help them make the decision on which one to purchase, because neither are inexpensive. So in today's video, I will be applying the Lancome to one side of my face and the Hourglass to the other side of my face. And then I have some check-ins for you after three hours, six hours, and then I think it was nine hours and 11 hours. To and at the end, after I show you all of that, I'm going to come back and give you my final thoughts on both. And if you're on the fence about which one to get, hopefully I can help you decide. Here are the two shades I will be using, 335W in the Lancome and shade eight in the Hourglass. The Hourglass is one fluid ounce and retails for $58, and it comes in 32 shades. The Lancome is also one ounce, but it retails for $47. And this one comes in 30 shades. So the Lancome also contains hyaluronic acid, which is a very popular ingredient in a lot of makeup and skincare these days. If you're not familiar with what hyaluronic acid is, hyaluronic acid is a sugar molecule that occurs naturally in your skin. It helps to bind water to collagen, trapping it in your skin. It links to water and makes your skin appear plumper. The Lancome claim is that it is an up to 24 hour transfer resistant healthy looking glow serum foundation with buildable medium coverage, which I agree with, and SPF 27. They also claim that this foundation is suitable for all skin types, including sensitive. Although a lot of people might disagree, being that there is fragrance in this product. Now let's move over to the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation, which is vegan and cruelty free. It also offers medium coverage, and the finish on this one claims to be natural versus glowy. This product contains light diffusing pigments that deliver a natural soft focus finish and help protect against blue light. It also contains blurring spheres to minimize the look of imperfections, fine lines, and wrinkles. Now maybe I'm overlooking it, but I do not see fragrance listed anywhere in the ingredients for the hourglass. I also don't smell anything when I use this product. Okay, it's time to get into the demo and check-ins. All right, I will be using two identical BK Beauty 101 foundation brushes. This one is just the travel size with the smaller handle, but the brush heads are exactly the same. Full disclosure, normally I do apply both of these foundations with a stands out beauty sponge. However, this is the current condition of the four sponges I have. And even if I cleaned them, I'm not 100% certain that the application 
would be identical. And I want the application method to be as identical as possible. I will be applying the Lancome foundation to the left side of my face and the Hourglass to the right side of my face. I did use a self tanner last night. As you can see, my face is a lot lighter than my body. So when I apply these foundations, you will notice that they do appear a little bit too dark and probably a little bit too warm for my skin tone. However, once they are blended out, you will see that they match perfectly with my body. So here is a closer look at my skin. I do have large pores, a bit of a rough texture, some redness. So I'm going to do one pump of the Lancome, place it on the brush, and apply it to the left side of my face, starting from the inner portion by my nose. Do you see how easily this blends out? And what a beautiful finish it gives. Even on my oily skin, I don't find it to be too glowy. Now that might be a negative for someone with very dry skin who wants a really radiant look. So this is one pump. I was not able to get my forehead with this one pump. So I'm going back in with just a tiny bit on the brush this time, not quite a full pump, and I'm applying that to my forehead, trying to make it perfectly even down the middle. Now I personally do smell the fragrance when I'm applying this and I don't love it. So for me that 100% goes in the negative column. But overall, I find that the good outweighs the bad. All right, hopefully you agree. This is a very, very beautiful foundation. Love the coverage, love the finish. All right, now taking my next brush, doing the same thing using the Hourglass, one full pump, and applying it from the inner portion of my face. Upon application, the Hourglass feels a little bit thin thinner. It's blending out, gosh, even easier than the Lancome. And I think it's smoothing out my texture better. Interesting. Very interesting. It's a little less warm as well, so this might be a better color match. And did you notice that I was able to get my forehead with just that one pump? So that's what I mean by it being a little bit thinner. It makes it a little bit more spreadable. And this one does not have any scent. So I do have some errands to run today, but hopefully no one will notice that I am wearing two different foundations. Okay, here we are in natural light. Once again, this is Lancome, this is Hourglass. I wanted to show you how it looked in this natural light with my iPhone before I put on any concealer or other face makeup or powder. This is what it looks like. I think they both look really, really good. So this is obviously in full makeup after about an hour. I think that the Lancome side is more glowy. Overall, this is the typical amount of oil that comes through on my face after this amount of time but I think they both look pretty nice. It'll probably be at the next check-in where I will have to powder. Okay, we are now six hours in and things are looking pretty good. I have not powdered. The sides of my nose are a little bit red, but that's because I have been having to blow my nose because I'm still a little congested from being sick last week. But other than that, it's actually for as often as I've been blowing my nose in the last hour, I'm surprised there's anything left at all in this entire area, so that's impressive. Um, I honestly cannot tell the difference between the side and the side. Like, not at all. They look identical to me. Actually, in this light, I feel like the hourglass side is a little bit more smoothing. Just finished dinner. We are now nine hours in, a little bit different lighting. I have not powdered at all today. 
I definitely need to powder. If I were going somewhere, I would powder because this is some serious shine. I feel like the um, hourglass side is still a little bit smoother looking. I definitely have lost more coverage around the nose area, but I think if I weren't, as I said earlier, blowing my nose, this would be fine. Um, I also feel like the long comb is shinier. At this point, I'm feeling like I like the hourglass better. It's not a huge difference, but it's enough where if you're debating between the two, I think that the um, hourglass for me would be the one I would choose at this point. I'm gonna check in in a couple more hours before I, before it gets dark and before I have to take this all off so I can go to bed. All right, it has been 11 hours since I first applied these foundations. I'm ready to go to bed. I'm tired. I need to put on my pajamas, wash all of this off. I did powder down my T-zone a little bit, but I think both foundations still look pretty good. I am going to give you my final thoughts tomorrow when I film my summary. I'm going to go look at myself in some other mirrors and some other lighting, but I definitely wanted to give you a glimpse of what the foundation looks like after a full day on someone with oily skin. Yes, I did lose three out of five of my press-on nails on one hand. All right, I really hope you found that demo and those check-ins helpful. If you had asked me a week ago what I thought of the new Lancome Tanti Dole Care and Glow Foundation, I would have told you it's incredible. Run out and get it. But honestly, now if you were to ask me, I would still say it's fantastic. But if you are looking for one more smoothing, number two, a product that's fragrance free, and number three, a product that's vegan and cruelty free, then it's a no brainer. You should 100% choose the Hourglass. Yes, the Hourglass is a little bit more expensive, but if you noticed in the demo, I was able to use less of this product than the Lancome. I needed a pump and a half to do my entire face with the Lancome, but I only needed one pump of the Hourglass, so keep that in mind. I'm not really sure there's much more I can say besides what I've already talked about. They're both absolutely worth at least getting a sample of. Sephora's pretty good about giving out samples, as is Nordstrom. And I would love to know in the comments if you have tried both of these foundations and which one was your favorite. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. If you are not already subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe button and join the Risa Does Makeup family. I do upload new content at least twice per week. You can also find more content from me on TikTok and on Instagram under the same username, Risa Does Makeup. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope to see you in my next video.